Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Vivek Bharata. In this video, we will be covering what are protocol buffers. Protocol buffers are created by Google, which are a powerful alternative to JSON and XML. Focused on making data transmissions faster and more compact. These are language agnostic data serialization format, meaning any language can read the serialized data and with the help of protofile, it can deserialize and process the data in any language. The beauty of protobufs lies in their binary format, which compresses data efficiently, making it faster to transmit and process. I will walk you through with a simple example of a JSON object in JavaScript, what is the size of it and after serializing that JSON data with the help of protobufs, what is the size and we will compare both and see how much amount of size we can save with the help of protobufs. Let's get started. We will start with a very basic example by creating one file that let's name it as one.js itself and let's start with the default request import because we will be saving that into the, into the flat file and let's create constant users and we can name and also let's create one user object name let's name it as fox name as fox at the end maybe pp dot com also let's add another field age 23 and let's add another array of objects that would be like force okay and let's create two objects over here one can be title um let's name it as post one and description post one description okay let's just copy this it says post two that's it I hope this is clear now so i just created a users array and one user object as this one and let's just push this user up okay now let's just print this out so dot log five users all right let me just run this no one dot js clear very basic right now let's just save this as is fs dot write file sync now let's name it as one dot maybe json okay now let's run this again and if, if you can see one data dot json has been created now let's just look at the file size this is like 172 bytes let me just go over here so the size for one dot data dot json is 172 bytes so this one data dot json has a very basic data what we just created right one user object and two posts inside that specific user object that's it simple so this whole data took 172 bytes okay now let's jump on to the protobuf implementation of the same user object so that we'll serialize into a protobuf and we'll compare that size with this 172 bytes which is generated for the the normal json object okay to begin with let's start with user.protofile now before jumping on to defining this user.protofile i have created one video on grpc which explains how the intercommunication between two microservices with the help of grpc and also one service is on Node.js and the other service is in Go. I would highly recommend to go through that video to get more understanding on the gRPC implementation with the help of same protobufs. And also I will attach the video link in the comments. Now let's jump back to the user proto definition. It starts with the first line as syntax as proto3. And let's open this back to the side. Okay, so this is the object. So if you can see here, the root object definition is name, email, age, and post. Okay, now let's start with the first definition of user object. Okay, I'll just show you. User and it has like, so first is name which is string, so string name as string name with field index as one. And the next one is email, also same string so and integer age so three 
okay now if you see, if you can see here we got three fields now we need post field also so let's first define the another object that is post right let's define this before same as same syntax as user so message post if you can see we have two title and description so let's just quickly copy paste title description that's it so over here there is one new keyword that we'll be introducing that is repeated which means this is like a repeated entity of type post and the field name is post field index would be the following number that is four clear so repeated of type post repeated you can relate to as an array and of data type of post so same here so if here also i can say like repeated in 32 ages or something other field example right so as an array of type that is like post type and the actual field name in this user object that is post field index the following number now if you can guess the users array the users payload can also be defined as simple as message users right and inside we have repeated because this is a user object of type user field name would be users field index one simple right so we defined user object first and we got this post so first we then later we define the post message and we just use that over here and users as an array because we're maintaining this as a users and we define that message also as users and that specific user type repeated that's it okay so user.proto is different now next step is let's create two .js file okay we'll use proto of js which is an npm module which can load this user.proto file and do all the necessary operations like serialization deserialization validation of the objects and all that stuff okay so let's first import these two and i think we can close this one but just keep this aside so fs require fs protobuf protobuf.js so first let's import the user.proto file what which is defined this one over here okay constant root protobuf load sync and let's the user oops user.proto okay so now if you can see this rules update now carries the whole user.proto and all the other helper functions which are embedded so there's another helper function inside that is like getting a each user each message object so we have like post user users right so first we'll get the user user message object and that again we can do so from here we'll just start using the root object okay and we'll be using lookup type and the type here is user okay so it will search for the user type in the user.proto file and it will get that object so from here let's copy paste the same user object okay now let's create the user message that will be user message dot create and we'll just pass this json object this one that's it okay now we will serialize this json object and for that let's just store this in the buffer user message dot encode this user and this is the syntax you can go to the documentation of protob of js on how to load and encode and decode but this is the basic syntax we can use okay so now let's just print this out console dot log serialized data buffer and let's just have this as a binary okay i think we can close this file Oops. yeah we haven't even imported that one so let's just add that 
purchase okay now well, let's run this again all right if you can see here we have this thing as a binary data so everything has been converted serialized this whole user object into the protobuf supported binary data clear let's just save this also to a flight file flight file sync serialized data okay let's run this again okay so now what we'll do we'll just do ls lbha over here if you see serialized data has 87 bytes okay the older one one data dot json has 172 bytes you can clearly see the difference right so 172 and the 87 there's like almost 100 bytes difference and in context of ratio this is almost like 50 percent reduced right and we can just do cat over here but it would be same okay but this is a binary data don't get confused we'll just use this to get the file size for only these two files 87 and 172 okay almost 50 percent reduced and it also varies based on the different structures and all but this is to get the comparison between the two formats the plain json format and the binary data of protobuf okay and also we can decode the same serialized data so these are the three lines which will deserialize same similar so user message decode this buffer object deserialize user let's just run this section okay as you can see this is the serialized data and this is the deserialized data so this example shows you how to convert a plain json object into a protobuf supported serialized data and we can transmit over the network and this field indexes plays a key role in compressing and serializing the data and also for the de deserializing of course i hope this is clear and it's easy to correlate how much amount of bandwidth we can save and also how fast it would be if we can serialize into a protobuf binary format and send it across here so in this example we have directly used protobuf js which will make sure to to support all the uh, all the encoding decoding the lookups for the other user objects and all that stuff right in context of the different examples we can actually generate code to get the helper function so that we will construct the whole object manually to to serialize the data so this for this is again for the demonstration purpose so let's just add this comment and i'll show you how we can generate the helper file and we'll import the generated file to do the same operations over here okay for that in the system we need to install proto c and the output we are mentioning it as js out and import style as common js and binary and save it over in the same root path and this is the user.proto so if i just hit enter over here it will create user pp.js and we'll just search with some keywords this is the fully generated code okay and i'll just show you some search uh, with some keywords of set name you can see here deserializing so this is being used internally again for deserializing and also we can use get name also let's just search with the post so get post list so for the user object we can also call these helper functions get post list to return all the posts for the user object okay now i'll just use the same 2.js file to import this constant let's name this as user schema and just import this user underscore pp which is the generated file i'll just show it to the top so this whole pb.js file has been generated with this user.proto file and this is the command we can look at the documentation to support for all the other languages and you can import in that specific languages that specific file and use all the helper functions to decode encode and all the other operations so here user schema we imported this user pp file so we'll start with user list first and we'll create one user list message object object okay and we'll define one user object also so new user schema dot user and now we need to call three helper from 
three setter functions to name these three values okay so user one dot set name box settings okay okay now we need to construct user dot post i'm just pasting the snippet over here user dot post for each inside we are creating each instance post object okay i'm just making use of the this user object directly to save some time okay so user schema dot post post message set title set description and if you can see add post add post so we can have these functions and so all these helper functions also will be defined automatically based on how we have defined in the user profile okay so i have created i'm iterating over two times and add post i'm just adding this each post message object that's it okay now this is and now we have defined user one full object has been constructed so this specific line user list add users i'm just adding to this user list instance what we have created now let's just log in now let's just lock this one user list to so there is one function called serialize binary before running we need to install google protobuf of module as well because that is imported inside this user pb generated file okay okay let's just run now we got an error user list is not a constructor i believe this would be users or user list let's keep and run this again okay so we have printed this value and let's just save this again over here and maybe let's call this as user user data dot two okay let's run this again let's print the files as this lsldh serialized data 2 that's it okay if you can see here 8787 same file size this is more verbose way of doing and this is protobuf js will take care of loading it and uh, making use of the internal generated code and all that stuff I hope this video is clear. As you can see the benefits of using protobuf, there are some downsides and challenges as well. First one is human readability. As you can see this is in binary format as it will be tricky to debug raw protobuf data. Second one would be learning curve. If you can see here without using the protobuf JSON module, we need to construct the whole set of each individual message objects and fulfill the whole user's schema object and from there we can serialize so there will be an initial learning curve to get a hands-on on protobufs and the last one i can think of is backward compatibility we should be very cautious when changing the schema of each message object and make it compatible across all the all the instances where this specific proto is being used so that's protocol buffers a high speed compact and schema driven way to handle data across distributed systems while it has some challenges advantages in speed and efficiency make it a favorite for high performance microservices. If your API needs to go from zero to hero in terms of speed and bandwidth savings, give protobuf a try. And remember, in the world of microservices, every byte and millisecond counts. And also if you want to see how protobuf works in action, check out my video on gRPC, where I break down gRPC and protobufs working together in real time inter-service communication. It's a perfect next step to build on what we have covered today. If you are enjoying this dive into protocol buffers, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. It helps our channel grow and brings you more tech content in microservices, backend development and more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.